Psalm 119.84-87 When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? Psalm 119.84 How many are the days of your servant? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? David begs that God would make haste in interceding on his behalf since the enemies were showing increased activity and he felt as if he were sinking under the burdens confronting him. He feels that if he is to see the deliverance from his enemies and troubles it must come soon. So, David's prayer is that God would come soon and do quickly what he feels assured by the word, God will do what is promised in delivering him from his adversaries rendering judgment. Psalm 119,85 The proud have dug pits for me, which is not according to your law. They continuously attempt to introduce me to their systems of idolatry and the fables of their false gods which is against your law. Psalm 119,86 All your commandments are faithful, they persecute me wrongfully, help me. David cries out with a renewed sense of urgency, help me, he yields to the idea that is pervasive in the Hebrew culture, that God's commandments in the word are worthy to be relied on since their foundation is established in God's truth while the purveyors of falsehoods rely on a lie as their foundation and they act accordingly. We read back in Psalm 119,78 Let the proud be ashamed, for they treated me wrongfully with falsehood, but I will meditate on your precepts. Psalm 119,87 They almost made an end of me on earth, but I did not forsake your precepts. Did you notice David's claim to faith when he separated earthly life from the promise of a heavenly and eternal dwelling place? Even if his enemies had taken away his life on precepts, nevertheless, he confidently looked for another life in the presence of his creator. The lions of the dark domain are chained, they can rage no further than our God allows, and David has perceived their limits. They may be able to cause his earthly demise or remove his earthly goods but nothing of his flesh will dissuade him from keeping the commands of God. There is good counsel in following along David's path. If we stick to the precepts of godly guidance we shall be rescued by the promises of our protector, but if we insist on resolving our own dilemma, we will place ourselves in great peril. One of their greatest perils is a temptation to use unlawful means for terminating their trials. 1 Corinthians 10.13 promises us this, on this side of the cross. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. The lives of God-fearing men are rife with near misses and narrow escapes.